Hello, so today I wanted to talk a little bit about Lacey Green's video. I had a couple of issues with it, but I think she generally did a good job of portraying both kinds of opinions on the whole gender thing within feminism. But I, I think there's some issues here, um, because I don't think it's necessarily stupid to think of biological sex as being a little bit more fluid and not necessarily a binary, because it doesn't make you an idiot. Um, and that's something that I had an issue with because it seemed like she was suggesting that if you don't think of it as being strictly binary, then you're stupid. I, I think that sex isn't necessarily as binary as we think, and that's not something stupid. And I dislike that Lacey made it seem like that. And she didn't really tackle the arguments either. She just kind of went, oh, well, that's just ridiculous. I'm just going to write that off and didn't really give it the credence it deserves. I mean, I know she's going to be talking to ContraPoints, who I know has a decent knowledge of this kind of thing, but it's a little bit frustrating to see her initially going into it, knowing knowing that she's going into this thinking that, uh, you know, Contra is an idiot, is pretty frustrating, really, because I know that's not true. And I actually think there's an argument to be made that biological sex isn't as binary as we think of it, because chromosomes aren't the only thing that we think of when we're thinking of biological sex. Well, that's pretty harsh of her. Why don't we take a look at the exact words she was using? A more comprehensive account of biological sex includes four traits. You've got chromosomes, hormones, primary sex characteristics, and secondary sex characteristics. And there's a little variation here, right? Low key. I mean, you've got, you know, females that are infertile. You've got males that have more boobage, all that kind of stuff. Then you also have, you know, about one in 2,000 people are intersex. They have both male and female bits. And another part of the variation is trans folks who will transition between male and female using hormones and surgery. Well, it's like she said nothing of the sort. Perhaps even the opposite. And perhaps she has an idiot that didn't watch the first part. So what did she say in the second part? In the past, liberal feminists used to argue that sex and gender are two different things. And now liberal feminists are arguing that sex and gender are essentially the same thing. The core of this argument is biological sex is a social construct. What this is basically saying is, you know, sex is a spectrum, similar to gender. There are females that can't get pregnant and males that can't get body hair, and you can't really tell someone's chromosomes for sure by looking at them. Therefore, sex is subjective. Hence, the expectation that I've mentioned before to remove all sex language from feminism. When feminists try to rhetorically erase sex from the conversation or to overcomplicate it to the point of meaninglessness, that is a facepalm for me. This is the exact opposite of what feminists have been fighting for for years. We have been fighting to have it recognized that our physical bodies and physical needs are different than males and that these bodies do not say anything about who we are. Sex is male, female, it's bodies, it's physical stuff. Gender is man, woman, it's cultural, it's personal stuff. This is the crux of the argument that transgender people's gender is valid because it has nothing to do with their sex, that women should not be defined in terms of their biology. But we can't make that argument if we can't acknowledge that biology is real in the first place. I don't see sex. Mm. Nope, nothing like that in there either. Just her disagreeing with erasing sex. Thank you very much. Bye.